what's up guys today's video is gonna be about ua uh, i'm gonna recommend you some units that i think are extremely annoying when i see them on my opponent's team uh, and probably some general theory about ua and stuff all right and, so, uh, and just a certain strat okay hopefully i'll keep this video as short as possible okay so when i talk about units they have to be at their optimal skill level it doesn't have to be plus 10 if you're in global or europe but if you're in asia definitely it has to be plus 10 to be optimal because everyone else is plus 10 so if you're in europe and global you compensate uh, based on your own judgment uh, what skill level is most optimal for your server all right i don't play global or europe so i'm not sure about that anyways okay units that are annoying for me personally Levia, Valfern. Uh, these two, along with Aaron, are pretty annoying to deal with right now. And Lucius. Okay, so if I see a Levia, Valfern, or Lucius, um, or an Aaron, I have to think twice on where I place my units. How am I going to deal with this, these units? Okay, because uh, notoriously hard to deal with. Especially a Velfen plus 10, which is so tanky, and the turnaround potential is so high. Uh, Levia insta kills. Basically, you know the units by now. I'm not going to go too deep into that. It's just that when these kind of units are put down on the field, you know you have to deal with them immediately, right? That's the way UA is. It's live. Uh, you got to work with it. Okay? Uh, general units that I would recommend you having in your lineup of 15 units. Warriors. Depending on what you have, I recommend you having 4 or 5 Warriors. Depending on what mages you have as well. You have to balance it out. But 4 or 5 Warriors that hit different tiles. Skip front and back. So that your opponent has to think really, really hard how he's going to place his formation, uh, his units, and the positioning that's involved. If you have all options available to you when you go into the match, you will have a sort of an advantage. Because your opponent has to think twice of where to put their more fragile units, right? So if you have all the different tile sets uh, of units, like maybe Leto for the back... Uh, skip Sigmund, Front Eden, Front Wilhelmina. Uh, basically, having these in the lineup of 15 units is going to be good for you because you have options to choose from, okay? Uh, sometimes Gunther is okay depending on how high tier you are in UA because uh, if you're not that high tier, I, I assume in Global and Europe that your opponents do not have that uh, high skilled units as well okay so basically four to five warriors different tower ranges uh, depending on what mages you have two three uh, roadblocks definitely you need roadblocks lucius lillian arkan uh, arkan you know the skill level that you need for him lillian you know uh, lucius definitely you know at least two roadblocks, okay? At least two roadblocks, three to five supports, depending on what you have in your box. Everybody is different. I would recommend having a Ceres since she's very common. Everyone has her. Uh, basically, just for this, that's weakening immunity. Uh, because Curse Counter is a thing, guys. Uh, with Seer, and then later on, you got Edwin, you got Levia, and all that. And of course, there's Memo that's going to be a big problem as well. If your opponent has a high-skilled Memo, you have to have a way to deal with the Memo, alright? If you watched my previous video where I talked about future meta, about uh, future units and current units that are really good, Memo is definitely one of the top tier at high skill levels. At plus 10, Memo is extremely annoying to deal with. So you have to have a plan to deal with that, alright? Uh, support, I would recommend a variety of tiles as well. Uh, line tiles, 3x3, uh, uh, like Belioth. 
uh, basically you have a combination of units that help you out, you know, with different power ranges. Feronia, Sarubia, um, to give you a little bit more options to deal with different problems you may face. Because uh, Sarubia makes you hit the front, right? I can't find my Sarubia. Oh my god. Alright, Sarubia. So because she changes the attack target to the front, uh, quite a nice option to have in UA. And then you have the more niche uh, supports like Themis, Helena. These are more niche, uh, depending on your lineup and how you want to have a game plan going in. Uh, you can use them, okay? Other than the top few supports that everybody uses, Warrior, Venaka, Veronia, Laura, alright? Belayev actually, I'm not sure whether it's popular in global and Europe, but Belayev is quite annoying to deal with because of skeletons, right? So try and have a nice balance of units and options to choose from when you go into a match in Underground Arena. Uh, warrior tiles, I think it's the most important thing you should keep in mind. Uh, also bring a couple of bombs, one or two. Or if you're using the Zenith strat, uh, you're going to bring Zenith and then Wiggle, uh, which I will explain later. Uh, Zakan, nice bomb to deal with problems, uh, you know. Uh, Choco, uh, also a problem to deal with, uh, and also solves problems, and you can chain him because he's a mage. Good to have, alright, good to have. Bring these along for UA, and probably if you place them well, you will have a higher chance to win. Uh, hell, hell, I would not really suggest, but she is strong if your opponent does not know what they're doing. Because uh, she is ultimately hard to kill if your units are not skilled up enough. Hell, depending on your tier, right? You might want to bring hell because of mage as well. So you can chain with the sports, makes it easier for you to hide stuff, which I'll explain later as well. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, okay, so when you go into a UA match, oh, uh, I'm demoted, damn, my defense is horrible. Okay, so when you go into a defense match, uh, UA match, uh, you normally start with supports, right? Wait, let me have a, a nice puff. <sighs> yeah, so when you go into a UA match, you're always going to start with a mage or a support, right? Alright, something like this. Depending if you're going first or second. Now I'm going to tell you the most important theory of UA. Okay? If you are going first. Alright? Let me drink some water. Okay, so. If you are going first. You have two units to put down. Right? So, depending on whether you're first or second, if you are going first, you can put your supports anywhere on the field, right? Anywhere. Anywhere is fine because you are going first. So, your supports buffs will always go off because you are going first. Okay? So you can place them anywhere. Supports only. They have the freedom to be anywhere. Because you're going first. Um, and because you can do that. The reason because you can do that is that your opponent who is going second. There is no point for them to aim at your supports. Alright. So if you chain properly. Uh, you know the basics of chaining by now. If you go first. Your supports can be anywhere because they don't get to aim for your supports. Now, if you are going second, you have three units to place first, right? On your first turn. Placing supports in positions like this. Okay, let's take... Like that. Okay, so if I have back, skip, front. If I place my supports in these positions and I'm going second, my supports run the risk of dying before they even do anything. So, 
for someone going second, if you are going second, you don't place them in places where they are at risk. You place your supports in this position. Okay, because this is possibly the safest position in the map for someone going second. Okay? Because you can solve problems like someone hitting the back with a Yunrang or Leto, you put a roadblock at the back, you put a roadblock in the front, if you said, you know, so and so. So basically, if you are going first, you want to aim for the opponent's supports. Alright, if you are going second, you want to aim for your opponent's DPS units. Alright, warriors, mages. Why? Because you can see where your opponent's DPS and mages are being placed because you are going second. So you are in a position to counter position your units against your opponent to deal with their DPS immediately. I hope this makes sense. Okay? So this is the biggest theory that you have to run with. Alright? Uh, there are exceptions, uh, like Walia. Walia, wa Walia with the taunt can be placed anywhere, put her in a place far away from all your other units. There are exceptions to every rule, right? So if you know and understand this logic, where you know what you're doing for the first turn, you're okay, you're fine for that. Now further on. Uh, let's talk about mid match. Mid match. Mid match. Let's say I have an opponent that has a Valfern in the middle lane, right? Middle lane on the opponent, right? So middle lane Valfern. My middle lane has one unit. Okay, placed in this position. So how do I not get destroyed by this Valfern? One way to deal with it is put a roadblock, uh, literally uh, Arkhan or Lucy. Arkhan depending on how many graves are on the field, you have to count. So if I place an Arkhan at the back and there are not many graves, the Alphurn is not going to have enough damage to deal with the Arkhan, it's not going to be able to kill the Arkhan. And because Valfern is a skip. It's going to hit here. Right? These six squares here. So what happens is, these six squares becomes a no-go zone. You cannot place any units if you decide to deal with a Valfern like this. Okay? These six squares become a no-go zone and you hope the Roblox tanks enough, uh, long enough, and holds it there for you, long enough, where your damage de dealers deal enough damage to kill them off quicker okay another way to deal with a middle well fern basically put units like this so if it's a middle well fern it's gonna hit this AOE these nine squares here so these I don't recommend these this way of dealing with it okay um, this is defensive positioning all right so I don't recommend this most of the time but it can work if you have units like uh, Leto, uh, uh, Eden, stuff that insta-kill stuff and you hope to deal with things quicker than your opponent based on how fast you kill off their team. You can, but I don't recommend, I, I rather prefer this, right? Just the roadblock at the back to deal with a Valfern. Okay? So now let's say the opponent has a Levia. Levia on this lane. Alright, top lane. Uh, you can see the Levia staring at you, smiling evilly. You deal with a Levia with a Lucy right on that lane. And depending on the skill level of the Levia, the range is different. So if it's a plus 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These 5 squares are a no-go zone. You don't put anything there. Alright, if it's a less than plus 10, these three squares, alright? Simple. Another way to deal with Valf uh, Levia, put a bomb. Like this. Or like this. Alright? But putting a bomb has its risk. 
Because if you put a bomb right in front on Levia's lane too early, your opponent can deal with the bomb by putting something else to sacrifice uh, on your bomb so that the Levia does more damage. Okay, so if let's say there's a bomb here, my Levia is on this lane, right? Same lane. I just put a, a Lucy on the same lane and the Lucy is going to hit the bomb and then the bomb has disappeared. Okay, that's a way to deal with it. Alright, so... Levia, Velfen, done. Just keep in mind they are AoE, right? Mages are very dangerous in UA. So you have to understand Underground Arena. Um, warriors are dealt with more easily, in my opinion, because roadblocks are a thing. So there's a Valja, you know, just stick a roadblock where she's going to hit. And then she's going to be stuck for a long time. Alright? Which is why you need a variety of tile ranges on your warriors. Because you don't want to be stuck on a roadblock and then you're eventually going to lose, right? Um, defenders, Eren. Eren now is a thing because of Wilhelmina. And Eren kills a lot of stuff with his counter like Sigmund, uh, Wilhelmina, mainly these two. Uh, Leto, Yurang. And Eren's a taunt, which makes it a little bit more confusing when you deal with taunts in UA. So if you're going to deal with a taunt, you have to count the turns. Okay, if let's say that Seer has a turn, or turn count of... Uh, seven. Okay, so I have to count based on how the turn order is being placed what unit is going to hit the seer okay and this unit ideally has to kill off the taunt all right if i happen to have a mage and i don't want the mage to be stuck on the taunt i have to have a unit to deal with this taunt immediately all right and so and so forth if you want to deal with uh curse counter units like seer you want to have Serez because immunity, this is quite important, or just a plain debuff immune unit like uh, Wilhelmina, alright? So basically debuff immunity is a huge thing guys, in every video I always talk about this, debuff immunity is very good, okay, especially if you deal with units with curse counter, alright? Um... I have seen people use Viola in UA, but I don't really recommend it because it doesn't really do much. Yunrang before 2-3 weeks ago was okay, but right now it's kind of outclassed. Uh, I'm talking about 4-star warriors right now, so Leto, Leto is probably the only one usable right now. Main arena, uh, underground arena, sorry. I think Leto is still really strong because he ignores taunts. Uh, and most of the time with enough buffs, he's going to one-shot stuff. Alright. Uh, what else? Okay, so Zenith Bait. Zenith Bait is a very scary thing if you don't notice it quick enough. So let's say I have a 3x3 support, and then another one, and then uh, maybe a mage. Alright. And then I'm not paying attention. I didn't see the Zenith on the opponent's team. I put uh, maybe a Foxy here. So if my opponent, for some reason, he sees this and he has a Zenith and a Wiggle combination, what happens is, this is the Zenith strat, alright? So basically, I put the Zenith exactly where Foxy is going to hit, right? Or maybe it's like that. This is even scarier. Alright, so if I see this, I put Zenith exactly where Foxy is going to hit. The taunt, Concentrated Fire, is going to be on Foxy. And then Wiggle just destroys four units at once. Right, that's the Zenith taunt strat. Okay? Very useful if you don't notice it. And having the Zenith and the Wiggle in your lineup is a threat itself already. Alright, so you have to be aware of it. Okay? Uh, 
other things that you can do in UA. Okay, so UA is a mode where you pit yourself against another live person, right? So, whatever you do, whatever unit you place down, you want to create a reaction from your opponent, alright? So, let's say I have... My team is set up like this, right? Uh, maybe... Alright, so I have uh, Leto being the first warrior to hit, to attack. What does this Leto do? This creates a reaction from the opponent that they are going to put a roadblock on the lane the Leto is. So for sure, you know that there's going to be a roadblock coming along. Okay, so you create a reaction. And that frees up your other options to put stuff on other lanes. Right? So you have to create a reaction. Uh, and in a way, if they do not have enough solutions to your problems you're causing, they will lose. Most of the time. Because if, let's say, they don't have the options. Uh, if I see my opponent have one roadblock and nothing else, I'm going to exploit that by putting as much warriors as I can on as many lanes as I can. Because you're not going to block all of them. Right? Same logic, right? If someone does that to you, you better have the resources and solutions available to deal with these problems. Okay? Uh, lastly, what I want to tell you guys is understand your units, understand their weaknesses, their advantages first so that you know how best to deal with and position your units well. Okay? Like, I know my warriors' uh, weaknesses are roadblocks, which is a given. Most warriors are afraid of roadblocks, except Wilhelmina right now. Uh, the mages, they're afraid of taunts, because having wasted two rounds waiting to cast a spell, and it's on a taunt, that's pretty sad. Roadblocks, you got to know their problems, their, what they're afraid of, you know. Mostly it's Wilhelmina right now, okay? Wilhelmina is a huge roadblock issue. And support, like I said just now, know your priority, what's your objective if you're going first or second. You have to understand what you have to achieve with those first few units. Okay? Anyway guys, keep a balanced roster of 15 units. Have solutions for things that you know are going to come, alright? I, oh, I, I definitely suggest at least one bomb, alright, a Zakan or a Choco, if you're not going to go the Zenith uh, Wiggle route and stuff. Um, Aaron is a huge issue for Wilhelmina and all that, so it's a counter here and there. It, that's the beauty of this game, right? A lot of units counter each other, uh, there's a counter for every single unit. Uh, the, the solutions may be few, but there's always a solution, right? Like I explained in my previous video, Memo 10 solutions for that. Few and far between, but there's still a solution, alright? If you don't have it, then you gotta think of another way, <laughs> okay, to deal with that. Anyway guys, I hope this video has been informational and has, will help you in your UA conquest for the future Underground Arena tournament. And I wish you all the best. I hope you guys do well. Uh, anyway guys, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, press the little bell notifications up. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, and lastly, I'm gonna end the video by giving you a statement that I am not the best at Underground Arena. I have bad streaks, I lose a lot sometimes. Sometimes I win a lot, sometimes I lose a lot, sometimes it's a win and a loss and a win and a loss. I'm not the best, but this is just my opinion and my thinking when I go into Underground Arena, alright? Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and catch me on my stream, okay? See you guys, ciao!